All right, this podcast will go over some things to help you get started with the harder script we're writing for this module. So I'm not actually going to write the entire script, but I will go over some things that you need to know uh, to be successful in this writing this script. So here I have a script I started called testscript.sh. Uh, one of the things we need to do is get the username we want to, to evaluate from a command line argument. And here I have uh, where I'm setting the variable user equal to $1. $1 is a special shell variable that is a positional parameter for the first command line argument. And then I'm echoing $user. So if I run this script and put in my username, it prints out my username. So that's all it's supposed to be doing right now. So the next thing we want to do is see if the user exists. And the way we can see if the user exists is by using grep and look for the username in Etsy password. Basically, if the user exists, we're going to get something back. If the user doesn't exist, we're going to get nothing back. So here's a user that exists. Well, let me do a user that doesn't exist first. If, if nothing in Etsy password matches my username, I get nothing back. So we can use that to know if a user doesn't exist. The converse of that is if we get something back, then that might mean the user exists. Why do I say that might mean the user exists? Because as we see in this case, uh, I have a RBE000 user, but I also had a RBE000 underscore T1 user. So I got back some extra stuff. So you're thinking, well, maybe that doesn't matter because you did get back the thing you wanted. But let's say I'm looking to see if the bin user exists because there is a user on the system called bin. If I'm looking for the bin user, it turns out that I get a bunch of stuff back right because bins matching in everybody's shell so what we need to do is we need to be a little more specific in our matching criteria and if we look at the Etsy password format we see that it has the username is the first field and the second field is a colon so there are a bunch of different ways we can do this but probably the simplest way is for us to change what we're grepping for and we want to grep for something like this Right, caret you probably doesn't don't know means match the beginning of the line, and then we put the username and then we put a colon because the end of the first field is a colon. So if we have something that matches the beginning of the line, the username and a colon, then that pretty much tells us uh, it's unique and that user exists. We could also use cut or awk or something to just get the first field and then do our grep after that. But this works fine, so this is what we're gonna do. So um, we're gonna use a command similar to this. Uh, to find out if the user exists. A couple of different ways we can uh, use this. Uh, one way is we can run the command and then if you watch the podcast that went over command line arguments and special uh, variables you remember that there's a special variable uh, dollar question mark that tells you the return code of the last command that was executed. So in this case we just ran the grub command so if I echo the return code I see it's zero which means it was successful. If I grab for something that doesn't exist and then look at the return code, one means it was uh, unsuccessful. So uh, we can either use the return code or another thing I like to do, and the reason I like to do it is because when I first started uh, scripting, the script I started maintaining, this is how the guy did it. So this is just the way I've always done it. You can set uh, the output of the command to a variable. So in this case, I'm going to set a variable called user exists equals the output of the command. If you remember, we put back text around a command uh, that uses the command and, and takes this output and puts it in that place. So this is going to set a variable equal to called user exists. That doesn't say exists. This is exits. User exists to the output of this command. So now if I echo dollar user exists, it's going to be empty, right? If I set the output of this command to something that's going to work, it's going to have something in it. So we could use this, we could do a comparison to see if the variable is empty or if it has something in it, and then do our logic based on that. I'm going to do the uh, use a variable method uh, to see if it's empty or not. So let's go back into my script and we'll go through the very first part of the script uh, so you can at least get started. So I'm, I'm not going to echo user anymore. That was basically uh, just a way for me to validate that it was working, debugging, if you will. So now I'm going to set a variable, user exists 
equals, I'm going to do grep, caret, dollar, user, colon. Why did I put these uh, curly brackets? Well, you can put curly brackets around a variable when you have other things jammed up against it uh, to make sure the shell doesn't get confused. I don't think it would have mattered in this case, but I, I like to do it when I'm jamming things up against a variable just to, uh, to, to make it easier. So we're going to look for dollar user from Etsy password. Sorry, we're going to look for caret dollar user colon from Etsy password. So this will um, have something in it if the user exists, and it will be empty if the user doesn't exist. I like to debug as I go, so I'm going to print out, print out the variable to make sure we're getting what we expect. So now if I run my script with a user that doesn't exist, I get nothing printed. If I put a user that does exist, I get the line from... Um, from Etsy password. So now we're going to put our comparison. We don't need this anymore. So if dash z meant null, right? I always like to put my variables in double quotes here because if you don't and there's a space inside that string that you're getting, then it's not going to work. I also like to go ahead and put my phi at the end as I put the if before I put the other stuff so that way uh, I know I have the right number of phi's and don't forget what I'm doing. So if the user, if dash z user exists, that means it's empty, then I'm going to print out dollar user does not exist. And else, I'm going to print out dollar, dollar user does exist. All right. So, Let's go run that. All right, so that, that's pretty much the first part of the script that we need to write for this week. Um, what you need to do now is once you know the user exists, you need to see if the user is currently logged on, right? So you'll do the same thing. I'm not gonna do it all for you, but it'll be like is logged, logged on equal, you know, here we're gonna put some command to see if the user is logged on. So basically what that's going to do is run the command and then you're going to do the same thing if dash z dollar is logged on then phi Echo dollar user is currently logged on. Logged one, logged on. So basically, this is how the script's going to progress for every thing you need to do. So the hard thing is knowing which command you need to run. Um, and I'm about to give you some help with that. I'm not going to write the whole script for you, but uh, the who command will tell you who's currently logged on. So if I run who, it tells me who's logged on. Big shocker, I'm the only one logged on. So if you want to look for a specific user, you can use who, grep, and put the username. Right? And that'll give you the line uh, if the user is logged on. So in that case, the REB user was not logged on, so the variable was empty. In this case, it would have had something in it. So you can use that to detect if the user is logged on. If the user is not logged on, you want to detect uh, when you want to print, when the time the last the user last logged on, you can use last log for that. Last log by itself will tell you the last login time for every user. If you want to know about a specific user, you can do last log dash u and put a username, and that tells you the specific user. So uh, this this might be problematic depending on what you're going to do with the the line. Because the next thing you're supposed to do is if the user uh, is not logged on, you're supposed to print the last time they logged on. So you can get that from here. So you're probably going to want to use uh, whatever you get. But this header line may mess things up. So you can get rid of that by piping that through tail-1. That will get you just the last line. So that will get you what you want and just what you want. So the requirements uh, for the script said you should print the, the last time they logged in. 
So that means I only want this part of this output. I do not want the IP address or the uh, TDY or the username uh, in this format. So that means you need to manipulate uh, this, this uh, line a little bit, uh, probably using awk to get that out. And then finally, a user that is never logged in, it will say never logged in. So if the user hasn't logged in, you need to print out that the user never logged in. So that's the requirements for the script uh, and the commands you can use. So now it's just a matter of you going back into your script and continue on, continuing on with this little uh, methodology of capturing the output in a variable and then seeing if the variable is empty or not empty. So that is uh, one way to do it.